Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with George Putnam. How are you today, George? I'm fine, Tracy. Thank you. George, I want to start by congratulating you. In a very challenging market conditions, you've managed to raise money. So let's start with your news release uh, just recently put out about how you've raised money. Sure. Well, at the beginning of this week on Monday, we put out a press release uh, that uh, indicated that we'd raised 2.1 million Canadian uh, at 10 cents a share, and we're very pleased to announce to the markets that we did that. But uh, even as important as that, this, um, this raise completed a milestone that, uh, that we have been uh, working on for some time in that it converts a debt to, uh, to an equity shareholder interest with a partner. So the company is now debt-free and has a 20% financial partner in the project. And uh, we welcome Scandium Investments LLC, we call them SIL, into the, into the project. Excited to have them there. Uh, and they're excited to be, uh, to be with us in the project. We also, in this press release, uh, announced the, uh, a, a very strong new board member addition to the Scandium board in, uh, in Andy Gregg. Andy's former director and uh, uh, senior VP of Bechtel, which is uh, the worldwide uh, engineering firm that uh, that everybody uh, that everybody knows, and uh, Andy's a wonderful addition to the board right at the right time as we go into our development of uh, of, our, of our project. Happy to have Andy with us now, and the other uh, the other element to that press release, of course. Uh, was that we um, told the markets what we were doing next with the funding, and that is uh, getting started uh, on our definitive feasibility study for Ningen. Well, I just finished speaking with Jack Lifton, and I think Jack's quote was, uh, I've been very skeptical over Scandium for the last 50 years, but now I am bull on Scandium. And in fact, he's planning on speaking about the whole supply chain of technology metals at our upcoming technology metal summit. And he is, again, he's very bull on Scandium. Now, a number of people seem to be right now, George, and you've been a leader. You've been, you've been holding the flag for Scandium for many years now. Can you tell us why all of a sudden it seems like everybody is talking about Scandium? I'm not as interested in why as I am excited to find other people in the tent with us. We have been believers, as you point out, for uh, for a number of years. It's a very interesting element. It's uh, it's uh, it's not a new element, but it's one that's got uh, uh, the world in front of it in terms of applications and uses. We know what we we all know what scandium can be used for, and when there is a reliable, secure supply at reasonable prices, uh, it's going to be taken up aggressively. So, Jack, welcome into the tent with us. We, uh, we're, we're, we're happy to have you. And, of course, now, Scandium, uh, we have been discussing how uh, the uses with renewable energy technology, uh, fuel cell technology, uh, but I understand that you like the, uh, the use of Scandium in aluminum uh, alloys. Can you tell us as investors why, George, because we know you're an expert on this topic. Well, we like scandium wherever we think it can go, and certainly uh, solid oxide fuel cells are one very promising market. But we believe the alloy business has the potential to be uh, much more significant over time, and it is um, it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> It is an area where the science is really well understood. Let me tell you what scandium does in an aluminum alloy. It improves, well, first of all, it improves the strength in any aluminum alloy, some more than others, but, um, but it gives a strength push to all of the different families. It improves corrosion resistance. It makes, it makes a weldable alloy weldable. It preserves weldability, and many alloys lose their weldability. Uh, and it does all of these things without, without ruining the wonderful mechanical properties of basic aluminum, the plasticity, the ductility, the, the, shape, the, the shape forming ability that engineers and, 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 and uh, people making products absolutely love about aluminum. So it's just the latest, best, well-known additive to aluminum alloys to make them that much better. Now let me tell you 
I mean, that, that in itself is exciting. But if you just sort of step back from this and look at this, this big push that's been going on for 50 years between aluminum and steel, and there's a frontier here, and both these two metals are battling for, for new applications on the edge. When you put a new alloy, when you expand the capabilities of a particular alloy, aluminum alloy, you push back that frontier, and that is a, we're talking big numbers here. So it's very exciting to, to come with, with the potential for a, for a new, uh, much improved aluminum alloy and to where it can go in the marketplace. And speaking of the marketplace, it's my understanding that this is kind of a chicken and egg situation with scandium. The more supply we have, the more demand there will be. And I understand that uh, there are a lot of companies uh, currently uh, interested in offtake agreements. Uh, are, are your phones ringing right now, George? I guess that's the only way I can ask this question. We are very interested in offtake agreements, as are all the others in this space, to demonstrate to investors and to demonstrate to the markets that uh, all these things that we talk about are are uh, are true and real. Uh, we're convinced. Uh, offtake agreements help us convince our investors. We have we have wanted to move our project along to the point where we really understood our costs and we understood our process. We are at that point now and so we're in a great position to go out and talk to people about selling them Scandium in a couple of years and yes we're, we're, we're busy doing that and uh, we actually wish all of our competitors success in this in this space as well. The more Scandium there is on offer through multiple businesses the bigger and faster this market is going to grow. Okay, that's very exciting. And speaking of exciting, uh, what should we as shareholders anticipate uh, in, say, the next couple of quarters? At this point, we put our heads down. We go start working on this definitive feasibility study in earnest of the DFS. We have uh, quotes in hand from a number of engineering firms. We need to sort through those now and make a, make a choice. We started this uh, search for our uh, definitive feasibility study engineering firm back uh, around PDAC, around March. Um, we have more than four uh, people interested. Um, we, have, uh, we, have, we, have, we have a number of options. One of the things we're going to do with the DFS is the same thing that we did with the PEA. Um, we're going to build a little bit of an all-star team and we're going to use some of the same people that were influential on the PEA in the DFS. That gets us some nice continuity. Well, George, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate the update. You're welcome, Tracy. It was my pleasure. Nice to see you this morning.